downtown TJ Brown. First and foremost, how are things as we as we get closer to your third UFC fight? Man, it's going well, dude. Uh, I think we're about three weeks out right now. Uh, weight's down great, dude. You know, I guess that that just uh, says something about how 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 disciplined I've been this fight camp and uh, how hard I've been training. You know, uh, with training, uh, going to uh, Glory MMA, man. We've, they've been putting me through the ringer down there, so weight's coming down. I'm in great shape, man. So just about three weeks out. And let's talk about the matchup. So on the first of May, you're gonna fight Kai Kamaka. How do you view Kamaka as an upcoming style matchup for yourself? Uh, I believe he's a, he's a he's a tough he's a tough guy, you know. But at the end of the day, everybody in the UFC is tough right now, you know. If you, if you ask me, the featherweight division is stacked. Um, I think he's a tough guy. Uh, with that being said, uh, I think we put together a great game plan to expose some of his weaknesses, and I really believe I see myself. Uh, uh, knocking this guy out, and if I don't, I'll, I'll drown him in the third. Very big prediction there, uh, TJ. You'll have to live up to that one. <laughs> Where do you see this fight primarily taking place? On the ground, on the floor, or a mixture of both? Uh, I see. I see it. it it's staying standing. It's as long as you know. When I start touching him, you know, I, I have some power, dude. So. When, when I start touching him, I, I believe he's going to go for his takedowns. He does have a, a wrestling base, so it'll be my job to, to, to defend it properly. And, and uh, you know, we may even see a sub if he, if he, shoots, a, if he shoots a bad takedown. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to touch on you about, because I actually got the opportunity to speak to Kai in uh, late February. And this fight got signed really early on, around about three months out. With right. all the fallouts of um, fights with COVID and such. Has it been a worry knowing that with such a long time period, something could go wrong? Uh, well, with, in my mindset, you know, honestly, you don't, with, with, with eight weeks, yeah, I had a, a game plan for him, but in the back of my mind, being in the fight game for so long, I, I have to remind myself that my opponent could change at any time. So, so for me, it was just about be, bringing the best, bringing the best me, you know, um, uh, I was game planning for him, but but for, but I also had the mindset knowing that anything could happen between now and then. So um, uh, I had to be prepared for anyone. Also, with that being said, eight weeks is a long is is a long time, you know. Yeah. So I had to I had to play this smart. I, I didn't want to burn myself out mentally. I've been in this game a long time, and um, I have I have burned myself out before. So I had to play it smart, you know. I, I did a few seminars throughout this camp where I went to Colorado and trained for a few days up in high elevation. Also went down to Texas and did some training there and taught a seminar there. So those are nice, uh, good little breaks for me, not just physically, but mentally that help keep me sharp uh, throughout the eight weeks. Do you like short notice fights or would you prefer, prefer yeah. having a Oh, you do uh, like short notice know, fights? Yeah, I do, dude. I actually do like it. You know, the, the less, uh, I don't like to get to thinking about it too much, you know. I just uh, I like to go out there and fight. I've I've seen it perform my best when I just go out there and do what I do and find, you know. Uh, with that being said, uh, th this camp has went so well, you know. Being down there with uh, James Krause, those guys, I think we've I I've really made some growth this camp. You know, a lot of times in camp, I think uh, uh, it's just about uh, really. Uh, t taking out your best attributes, getting in prime shape. But man, I have really gotten better this camp. You know, I, I fixed, I have really fixed some holes in my own game, as well as added some new tools that I'm looking to use uh, here in a couple of weeks. Let's talk a little bit about the gym that you are, one of the gyms that you're based out of, Glory MMA okay. and Fitness and James Krause. How much has being down there with James and the guys down in Kansas helped improve your game? Oh man, you know, from, from, I have improved in a, on a wide range of areas. One being from just the, the killers that are down there, dude, it's a shark tank down there. You know, there's a, there's a number of UFC guys down there and, and a lot of good up and comers as well, you know, so I'm getting pushed in all areas. And, and when I'm getting pushed like that, it's really uh, forced me to get back out of my comfort zone where when I go in each round, I'm having to perform at my best. You know, I'm really having to uh, 
give it my best and 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 which brings out the best in me and also that it, it makes it exposes some of my weaknesses so I've, I've been exposed in a few ways that that made me really uh improve in, in some areas so that's one area and also like James is a whiz, man. Like, uh, I've been lucky to have some really great coaches throughout my whole career, my athletic career. And they're all, they've all been great and played a huge number in my game. But, man, I'm telling you, there's something special about this James Krause and the, and the culture he has created in that gym at Glory MMA. I got the opportunity to speak to James. I believe it was before the Megan Anderson title mm-hmm. fight. So it would have been at the yeah. early March. And even just with speaking him, speaking to him, you, you get the impression about how disciplined you he, he has you guys down there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Who do you work with primarily when you're down in glory out of interest? Uh, you know, if, uh, with Grant Dawson. Uh, man, I hate to leave him by out because, man, I've, 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 I've worked with, with the full room, really. Uh, uh, Kevin Kroom, I worked yeah. with him. Uh, there's a guy named Don. Uh, David, uh, man, Mo, man, I, I've worked with a number of guys. Yeah. Also that man, uh, so I was down there with uh, James Gallagher when he was here. Yeah. It was, it's a funny story, man. Uh, we, we were doing uh, nogi rounds and I'm looking into this guy and I, I didn't know who he was. Uh, I didn't know who he was and uh, I'm just looking at this guy. He's a bit smaller than me. So we go out there and uh, I start the round with him. I'm kind of just kind of flowing through things. And man, this kid jumps on me, jumps on my back. And then for the next four minutes, we're in a war, just, you know. And uh, I, later on, I, we, we talk, and this dude is super cool. And I look him up, I was like, man, no wonder, man. This guy, is, he's the truth, man. That that kid's good, man. He He's liable to be something special. Yeah, he's in a great fight next month. He fights uh, Apache Mix in Bellator. Oh, nice. That is a good one. That's going to be a very good fight, definitely. Apache Mix, Gallagher is known for his jiu-jitsu, but Apache Mix's nickname is the Human Backpack, so that's fight, fight's liable to hit the ground at some point. Nice. He hit, yeah. I'm going to tell you, Gallagher's ground game is some of the best I've seen. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's funny how people say he's an, an, an uh, imitator of Conor McGregor and yet has a completely different style. They're not the same game, though, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're, they're just ginger guys from Ireland, basically. <laughs> right. What I wanted to talk about with you as well is obviously 2020, you had your first two UFC fights, but both obviously never went your way. Yeah. Do you feel any pre- any extra pressure going into this third UFC fight? Oh, yeah. I'd love to lie to you and say, like, man, yeah, everything's cool. But that's not the truth, you know. But there's a reason I've, I've made these these changes, you know, um, because I, I do feel in a way my, my job is on the line. I, I've worked... I've worked for I guess ten years now in this in this sport to to be in the UFC. You know, 2019 I was undefeated. I've won like five or six fights in a row. Then 2020 I dropped two in a row. You know, uh, when that happened, I felt like there need to be some changes made. So I made some changes. You know, uh, I got out of my comfort zone. I, w- I went to a different gym uh, for a few weeks. I I got a sports therapist. I, I've just made some essential changes that I think need to be done and. And I'm really, I'm really excited to show you guys uh, the new improved me that that's going to come out. So, you know, this has been a fighting for me my whole life has been a, a way to develop my me myself in my life, not not just in the fight world, but 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 me as a man. And and uh, I've grown so much in these last ten to eight weeks. And man, I'm, I'm I'm excited to show the world. Yeah, I'm very. I think we're all very much excited to see it. Do do you feel like something you? Mentioned there, I wanted to pick up on. Do you feel like you need to win this fight to keep your place in the UFC? Is that fair? I would think so. You know, I would think so. You know, um, uh, I would think so. I, and 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 like I said, I've worked my whole life to be here. I want to stay. You know, so I'm going to come out in this fight. You know, and with all guns blazing, and, and I'm going to open up and 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 I'm just going to let it go, you know. I'm going to I'm going to put it all out there so that I know no matter what happens in the end, I, I did everything right, you know. Yeah. Uh, my, my preparation's been on point. There's been no shortcuts these last weeks, you know. No shortcuts, whether it's uh, training, my nutrition, everything has been on point. So there's been no shortcuts. And, and in my fight, you're going to see me push on the gas and, and open up so that 
I have I have no uh, doubts or or I'm not going to look back saying what if because I'm going to yeah. open up and uh, let these hands go and and do my best, you know. And that's all we can do in life, you know. Any anything can happen, you know. But I'm I'm going to go out there and uh, do my best, knowing that no matter what, I can I can be happy with the way I performed and the way that I handled myself. Yeah. A couple of times there, you mentioned letting your hands go. Do you feel like in your first couple of UFC fights you haven't perhaps let your hands go or have yeah I, well, well the first fight <clears throat> let's talk about that so okay. so my first fight uh we had the game plan uh to go out and take this guy down and, and grapple and, and and uh really put some pressure on him which wasn't wrong I just I, I just should have opened up more uh with my hands you know I dropped the guy in the first 10 seconds and then <laughs> tried to take him down you know that just wasn't smart you know and then uh, uh, my, 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 my next fight, you know, I break my orbital in the first 30 seconds to a minute of the fight, and then those calf kicks were, were, were killer. So I just haven't been able to, to, to show how, how good I am, and yeah. I think May 1st is going to be the one. <laughs> Superb. And if we talk about 20, 2021, obviously the priority is getting the victory the 1st right. of May. But what other goals do you have for the rest of the year? Is there anything else you would like to accomplish? You know, I, I've learned I've learned in this sport that what works best for me is consistency. So I'd like to get this ball rolling May 1st and man, stay in shape and keep fighting. I'm I'm no uh, young chicken, you know, anymore. I'm, I'm getting older, you know. So I'd like to get out here and get this win and, and get on a run, you know. Uh, I don't want to strike while the iron's hot, you know, and uh, keep this ball rolling. So. Like you said, first objective is to get this win May first, and let's 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 get another one. Yeah, and obviously the fight card previous to the one that you're on, UFC two sixty one is the first. Oh, I'm so jealous, dude. <laughs> I, I was going to ask that. Would you have preferred to have been on yes, on that card? Dude. Um, so the the apex is fun, you know. I, I won the my Dana White Contender Series fight there, so I've got a good memory there, you know. However. Dude, I, I, I'm a fighter that I enjoy the crowd, dude. I, I feed off of it. I like the lights. One of the reasons I I fight is, is to get under those lights and perform. You know, I I love that spotlight. I love the crowd cheering. There's no high higher than Winnie and that crowd going wild and, and yelling your name. Like, you you can't beat it. There's nothing in this world that can compare to it, you know. So, I, I'm so jealous. I can't fight on that that Florida card, but – you know what, let's win this May 1st one and then I'm sure more places will be opened up. Yeah, of course. Well, let's turn the conversation back to the fight at hand for my final question. Okay. Give me a prediction for the 1st of May. What happens when you fight Kai Kamaka? Uh, second round TKO. Second round TKO. Yes, sir. You, that... can, you can put it on your betting odds. <laughs> <laughs> I will hold you to that. If it doesn't come through, I will hold you to that. Dude, dude, oh my God, so crazy you say that. I had some inboxes, man, were for my last fight. I was like, man, I bet on you. You owe me this money. I'm like, dude, I didn't tell you to make that bet. <laughs> Got bigger problems than someone else's bet, I presume. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember the first fight I asked for a prediction was Rob Font before his fight with Marlon Marais, and he told me a second round KO, and he actually outdid his own prediction and knocked him out in the first round. So hopefully... You could do a little bit of the same. <laughs> hey, man, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it for sure. Super. Well, it's a great fight. It, I've, as I said, as I said to you, then I've had the privilege to speak to both of you before the fights, and there's no animosity between you and no, Carlos. Man. No, dude, for sure not. Uh, you know, like I said, anything can happen between now and then. Maybe I drop out and get another opponent. I've got no ill will towards uh, Kai Kamaka, you know. Um, but with that being said, I don't have to hate somebody to go in there and take their head off, you know what I mean? So it's my it's my job at the end of the day, you know. I'm not I'm not a I'm not a bad person. I, I have no I have no animosity towards him, but it is my job, and I have to go in there. It's the hurt business. I have to go in there and handle my handle my business and do my job. Of course, and I'm sure you will. Before we finish, TJ, how can people find you on social media? Uh, downtown TJ Brown. Follow me on Instagram or Facebook. How did you get that nickname? Is that just is uh, that just yeah, it rolls okay. off the tongue or? Um, so this so we we have a wide variety of people at our gym back home in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and uh, we had this pro boxer. She's a female pro boxer, and she came in the gym one day. She's like, "What's up, downtown TJ Brown?" And uh, from that day on, it just stuck. <laughs> it is. 
probably it's certainly one of the the nicest nicknames to say. Some nicknames don't roll off I mean, the tongue. It's kind of cool, huh? It sounds good. It's got a good uh, sounds good on the tongue. It does definitely. <laughs> Before we finish, is there anything you would like to say or sign off with at all? Man, I'd, I'd like to say thank you to all the people to help me. You know, as far as my training partners, my coaches, uh, my sponsors. You know, uh, thank you so much. Uh, everybody's helped me back home with my my classes, uh, helping with my son. You know, uh, just just appreciate it. I, I couldn't do this on my own, and I'm very thankful for everyone. Yeah, great way to sign off. Great talking to you today, TJ. Thanks, man.